South China Morning Post, 12 February 2024, to deter China, India supports a resurgent old foe in Sri Lanka. China finances Communist parties around the world as a strategy to maintain and project power, even though communism has been disproven, individuals continue to be duped. India extended an official visit to the leader of a rising Sri Lankan communist coalition last week, indicating that New Delhi wishes to strengthen ties with a political force on the verge of seizing power in the island nation but is more organically aligned with China. Janatha Vimukti Paramona, JVP, a Marxist-Leninist party that advocates for the People's Liberation Front and has previously spearheaded armed insurrections against the government of Sri Lanka, is commanded by Anurakumara Disanayake. He led a delegation from National People's Power NPP, a political alliance established by Dasana Yaka nine years ago, during his visit to Delhi from February 5 to 10. According to a December opinion survey, the NPP was polling at a 50% advantage over the presidential election scheduled for September or October. Senior members of the NPP delegation in India were accompanied by External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar, National Security Advisor Ajit Dalval, and Foreign Secretary Vinay Mohan, all affiliated with the Narendra Modi administration. This represents a significant political reversal for an alliance that received only 3.84% of the vote in the 2020 general elections. However, much has changed over the past four years. Sri Lanka has been grappling with an economic crisis since early 2022 when it declared bankruptcy. In July of that year, widespread demonstrations resulted in the removal of its former president from office. In light of this, analysts interpret Delhi's outreach to the NPP, led by the JVP, as an attempt to sway a political party with a long-standing hatred towards India. Extant Adversaries The NPP is not the best scenario for India's interests in Sri Lanka due to the JVP's well-known anti-Indian stance, said Nirmal Ranjit Duasiri, the Dean of the History Department at the University of Colombo. However, Delhi, is powerless to prevent it. Duasiri stated in This Week in Asia that the late Rohana Wijuira, the founding leader of the JVP, delivered a lecture in the 1980s titled Indian Expansionism. According to Wijuira, those lectures portrayed India as an adversary of Sri Lankan interests. The party was also adamantly opposed the 1987 Indo-Lanka Accord, signed by then-President J.R.J. Wardeen of Sri Lanka and Rajiv Gandhi of India. Designed to end the island's protracted civil war, the agreement incited widespread protests when it mandated the presence of an Indian military contingent in the country for three years on peacekeeping operations. The agreement served as the impetus for the 13th Amendment to Sri Lanka's constitution, which was a contentious resolution at the time and has yet to be executed entirely. The amendment, which India suggested as a resolution to ethnic tensions between the Tamil minority and the Sinhalese majority, continues to be a significant topic of discussion in Delhi. However, several stakeholders in Sri Lanka perceive its provisions, which grant authority to provincial councils, including the police, as a potential menace to national unity. Following the accord's signature, the JVP spearheaded an uprising motivated by dissent towards Indian influence in Sri Lanka. It was suppressed mercilessly by government forces. Duasiri stated that, due to the party's ideological foundations, the JVP would be considerably more at ease allying with China, as opposed to its previous hostility towards India. An NPP delegation previously traveled to China at the behest of an official invitation. Therefore, India desires a deeper understanding of them, said Paiki Asathi Saravanamuttu, executive director of the Colombo-based think tank Center for Policy Alternatives. According to him, regional security concerns for Delhi were likely sparked by the recent ascent of a pro-China leader in the Maldives, which presumably prompted Disanayake's invitation. India, is concerned with the security of its regional security network, stated Saravanamuttu. Following his meeting with National Security Advisor Dalval, Disanayake stated that regional security and bilateral relations were the topics of their conversation on X. In a separate post on the platform, External Affairs Minister Jayshankar stated that discussions had centered on the bilateral relationship and the benefits shared by both parties from its continued strengthening. India will perpetually be a dependable ally and trusted friend of Sri Lanka, stated Jayshankar. In response to media inquiries at the airport upon the delegation's return on Saturday, Disanayake maintained that the party's political or economic policies remained unchanged despite high-level meetings with India. In sectors such as information technology, we can learn a great deal from India, 
he said, adding that the NPP hoped to receive India's assistance in these areas should it ever establish a government. We aspire to effect national change through popular leadership and require assistance from the international community. Both capital and technology will be required. Disanaya case stated, we cannot win as an isolated nation, we must strengthen our international relations. An alternative JVP? Professor Jayadeva Uyangoda, a former senior political scientist at the University of Colombo, believes that the JVP's anti-India stance has evolved, in light of China's debt trapping of Sri Lanka. Amid Sri Lanka's ongoing economic crisis, the NPP coalition at Spearheads has acquired immense popularity, particularly during the mass demonstrations that toppled former President Gotabaya Rajapaksha in 2022. The IMF has imposed austerity measures and rising living costs on ordinary citizens as a condition of its US 3 billion US dollars bailout, according to Uyang Gota. As a result, a distinct rift has emerged between the country's traditional ruling elite and those struggling to make ends meet. A tremendous amount of disillusionment, disillusionment, and ire is directed at the unchangeable ruling elite, he declared. The average citizenry of the nation desires a transformation. NPP has positioned itself progressively more credibly as an alternative. Uyangoda stated, they wish to represent the interests of the majority of Sri Lankans, who are middle class or poor and are being unfairly asked to bear the burden of the economic crisis. According to Dua Siri, the JVP has evolved into a more pragmatic political organization to align its policies with the changing global landscape while also relinquishing certain Marxist principles. He stated that many members of the NPP alliance self-identify as social democrats and endorse democratic principles coupled with social justice. Many would argue that they would prefer a system comparable to Scandinavia, he stated. However, Saravanamutta doubts that the JVP has genuinely abandoned its Marxist origins. One should assume this if they intend to serve as the nation's government. However, we require additional assurances and policy clarification from them before we can state categorically that this is the case. He continued.